What's up kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Dark Previews and in today's video I'm going to take you through an in-depth player prop preview for these upcoming games in the WNBA. I'll share my screen, we'll go through outline, I'll take you through all the key players, we'll talk about their matchups, their form, what they did in game one, the things I like, the things I don't and I do all this to give you all the information that you need to make the best bets possible. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm going to drop bangers like this every single day. If that sounds interesting, let's go. So we're jumping into Outlier. If you did not know, Outlier is the go-to tool that I use for all of my sports better needs. If you're interested in checking out this amazing tool, there's a seven-day free trial in the video description below. Please do check this thing out. So the first game that we're talking through is the Las Vegas Aces versus the New York Liberty. Uh, excellent game one, was entertaining as hell. The Liberty eventually got the win. So we'll go through all these key players. We'll talk about what I think is going to happen. I'll even let you know which ones I'm planning on betting on. If you hear this air horn, it means I'm betting on it, right? So hopefully uh, that makes it a lot easier you guys to follow. Alternatively, you can just jump on a winnable, sign it to my free picks, and then at least you know what I'm betting on there. So let's go through the players from the Aces first. Uh, they are on the road. Um, we'll start with Asia Wilson. So Asia Wilson, point signs at 23.5, her rebounds at 10.5. The New York Liberty have done an excellent job containing Asia Wilson pretty much her whole career. But talking to her points prop first, 23.5 is the line that we're seeing. Uh, she's only hit this in three out of her last 12 games against the Liberty, played them three times this season, twice in the regular season, covering this line one out of three. Looking at her recent form, she's hit this in five out of her last 10. But I think... What's probably most important is what's been happening as a late, like last couple of games. We're talking about the playoffs. But then also, what has she done against the Liberty? And what we can see here is that she hasn't necessarily been crushing this line. And it's not as if she's been playing bad, right? The Liberty have just done a good job of slowing her down. Uh, in that last game, she scored 21 points, 16 shots, 56% shooting from the field. Uh, three from the free throw line. So these free throw numbers are quite low. Uh, but it's okay. What the Liberty do very well is they get the ball out of her hands. So they do double her um, on the times. They make life as difficult as they possibly can be. So they don't shut her down completely, but they are limiting her. So her point sign has actually dropped uh, from the line to this. And it's purely because of these performances. And it's gotten to the point where I'm not even brave enough to bet the under. I'd lean the under, but I'm not brave enough to bet the under for Asia Wilson and her points. Uh, in terms of what adjustments are going to be made after this, I don't think offensively the Aces do too many adjustments necessarily for Asia Wilson. Uh, there are others in that team that I think need to play better, but Asia Wilson, I don't think there's more that they could be doing. Um, so in terms of points prop, I'd lean to the under, but I am better than that. Her rebound props at 10.5. She only had six rebounds in that last game. Five out of her last 10 games, she's hit the over. And against the Liberty, four out of her last 12 uh, but she's under in two out of her last three games against the Liberty this season. Um, so it's under. The books are favoring the under here at minus 119. I'd definitely be leaning with them to go under. But what needs to happen in order for her to go over? Well, the Liberty need to shoot worse. That's definitely one thing. Um, they scored 87 points. Pretty high scoring in that one. The Liberty did shoot quite well in that game, though. So there could be more rebound opportunities for her. The 10.5, though, again, it's something that I'd probably lean to the under on. So if you're looking for a bet on the under, you might want to look at Asia Wilson under points plus rebounds. Uh, but then again, I am going to round with that. So Asia Wilson, I probably won't be betting on her much this series unless she has another quiet game and this line drops even further. Then we possibly could be talking about the over here. But for Asia Wilson in this game, I'm not taking any bets on. Next, real quick, we've got Chelsea Gray. Now, Chelsea Gray, I was a freaking jackass. I bet on her in the last game. She was terrible. She was awful in that last game. She looked like the worst player on the court. Uh, she scored four points, 26 minutes. She was two from seven from the field. And with her assists, only had one assist in that game. Her line was at five, what, four and a half, five and a half, something like that. Points line at 10 and a half. Didn't get close to either one of them. She does have a great history of beating on the links, though, which is why I bet on it. You can see it here. But... Yeah, she just looked like she struggled. She looked slow. She looked heavy. Um, just wasn't getting a rolling. She took the same she normally would. She just couldn't make them, uh, which ultimately led to less minutes for Chelsea Gray. So I personally, the way that I'm looking here at Chelsea Gray, I think she has a better game. Um, a lot of the times when I get a bet wrong, the following game, it tends to happen. So I'm thinking she does go over. I'm just not brave enough to bet it. And the reason why is if I bet the over and she flops again, I'm going to look like the biggest idiot on the internet. 
So I'm going to choose not to bet it, but if I had to, I'd be leaning to the over for both her points and her assists. I'm expecting her to bounce back and get back to doing what she normally does. But outside of Chelsea Gray, we've got Jackie Young. And the siren's gone off. So this is the first bet that I want to share with you guys. And I'm looking at Jackie Young over her points prop, uh, over 13.5 points. Now, the Liberty, they've actually played in terms of slowing down Asia Wilson. Um, when they do that, it kind of forces Kelsey Plum and Jackie Young to score a lot more. Their shot attempts go up in these matchups against the Liberty. Uh, Kelsey Plum, she was excellent in that first game. Got 24 points on 17 shots. So I can see the Liberty here making some adjustments, maybe uh, having some emphasis on running Kelsey Plum off the line, forcing her to drive and then collapsing when she does. And I think that's going to open things up for the likes of Jackie Young and Chelsea Gray. Um, I already spoke about Chelsea Gray, and I don't not game enough, game enough to bet on her, but Jackie Young, I am. Uh, so she is capable as a scorer. Post the Olympic break, her scoring numbers kind of fell off the map. Let's take a look at it right here. So it's from this point onwards, her, her last... 17 games. In her last 17 games, she only hit this line six times. Sorry, five times. Um, so five out of 17, over 13.5 points. So she really struggled post the Olympic break. When I did a deeper dive into this, her minutes were still there. What was very noticeable comparing the last 17 games to the start of the season, she's seen a massive drop off in her shot attempts. So I'm expecting more shots from Jackie Young. This is the playoffs after all. Um, Asia's getting double team. Jack is going to see more shots. She took 16 shots in that last game against the Liberty, and her percentages weren't great. 38% from the field. The shot volume, it leaves me quite optimistic. Now, I've already run the numbers here for Jackie Young, and on the season, when Jackie Young takes 16 shots or more, she's over this points line in nine out of nine games, averaging almost 24 points per game. So I'm loving this play for Jackie purely because of the volume. If she can get 16 shots, this is money. Take it to the bank. Scored 17 points in that last game, and she didn't She didn't shoot well at all. She just shot the ball a lot. So this matchup is difficult. Um, we're going to make sure I call that out. But at the same time, given the opportunity that Jackie's going to see, 13.5, I think she can cover that. So that's the first way that I do like for Jackie Young. I looked at her assists and her rebounds. Um, I'd lean to the under for both of them, under 3.5 assists, under 3.5 rebounds. But I'm not man enough to play them, but that's the way that I'd be leaning in terms of her rebounds. She has a rebounder well against the Liberty. Check it out. Um, un she's only hit this in three out of her last 13 games, the over. Um, and just looking at what she's done this year, four, zero, and two rebounds against them. Looking at her assists against the Liberty, one out of her last four games. So six, first time they played this season, then three, three, and two. So trends say take the under. If this was at four and a half, I'd love it. That's where it normally sits for Jackie Young, but odds makers obviously aware of the head-to-head -head trends. They put it down to 3.5, and that is probably unplayable for me, so I don't want to touch that. Let's talk about Kelsey Plum. She was an absolute beast in that game. 24 points, like I just said. Her line's at 17.5. Um, she's covered this in three out of the four games against the Liberty this season, 22, 13, 25, and 24 points. So this is the playoffs after all, and I expect some adjustments to be made from the Liberty. If this wasn't the playoffs and we're just looking at another regular season game, then I think the over would look nice. But knowing that these teams are going to adjust, um, I'd probably, I'm not going to lean to the under here. I'm just using not to play it. So that last game, 17 shot attempts from Kelsey Plum, very high. Um, but she shot 53% from the field, which is excellent. Four for eight from deep. So... Um, making it rain, and I think the Liberty do make some adjustments. If I had to bet on something on Kelsey Plum and it had to be a point, yes, I would lean to the over purely by the based on the fact she's going to get a ton of minutes, 37 minutes in that last game. She's still going to get some shots up. I just think the Liberty make it more difficult for her. She probably still, do, still does go over, but I don't see her scoring and having another 20-point game. Now, looking at her assist prop at 3.5, she's covered this in four out of the last 10, did have four assists in that last game. Against the Liberty, uh, she's covered that in two out of the four games this season. Now, an over in her assist prop is probably what I'd be leaning here if I make the assumption here that the Liberty are going to do some adjustments, run her off the line, force her to create shots for others more often than they did in that last game, then she can definitely get more than four assists is what I'm saying here for Kelsey Plum. So I'd lean to the over. Um, looking at her rebounds, 2.5 is the line. Not much happening here. I would, just wouldn't take any bets on Kelsey Plum to get boards. Her three-pointers made lines at 2.5. She did just make four three-pointers against them. 
Um, she's made covered this line in two out of the four games of Liberty this season. The one thing that's important to know, this game where she hit five three-pointers, Asia Wilson didn't play in that game. So Kelsey Plum did see a lot more volume than she normally would. The four three-pointers she made in the last game, amazing shooting splits. Um, yeah, I don't want to bet on her three-pointers. But no bets from Kelsey Plum for me, but you might be inclined to bet on it. Taking a look at the New York Liberty now. So let's start with a bit. Nigel Laney Hamilton will work these up from, from top to bottom. So her point signs at 9.5 against the Liberty this season. She's hit this in one out of three games under in her last two. Last season and in the playoffs, she was a beast against them. Looking at her last 10 games, she's hit in five out of her last 10. She only played 21 minutes in that last game. And her volume's not great, and neither is her shot percentage. So Based on the form, you'd have to bet the under right now for Bet Nigel Laney Hamilton. Um, but, and I honestly don't hate that, actually, now that I think about it. 9.5 points for Bet Nigel Laney Hamilton. Capable of going over, that's for sure. Hasn't got it done lately, though. So I'd be leaning to the under there. Her rebounds, I believe 3.5 rebounds was a plus money play in the last game, and I'm spewing I didn't take it. She finished with four rebounds, but I think she had three rebounds in the first quarter. Five out of her last 10, she's hit this, averaging 3.4 boards. She has covered this rebound line in every game against the Aces this season. So I'd lean to the over four, but Nigel Laney Hamilton. What concerns me, though, is that she only played 21 minutes in that last game, and it wasn't because of foul trouble. So I think Leonie Feebish um, is probably the preferred three that they play, not but Nigel Laney Hamilton. So I think that's the risk with her. Brianna Stewart, she was an absolute weapon in that first game. 34 points, uh, a game high 34 points, I must add. 35 minutes, she did only 19 shots, two from four from three, eight from nine from the free throw line. So Brianna Stewart, efficient as hell. Um, how do I think they adjust here? Well, there's got to be some sort of adjustment, right? You can't let Brianna Stewart just continually drop 30 points in year. Now, that was the first game where she's really exploded against the Aces. You can see it here in quite some time. This includes the playoffs last year, the regular season this year. Uh, Brianna Stewart absolutely exploded. Some adjustments are going to be made. I'm not saying she goes under, but I don't have any confidence to bet her over after such a wonderful game, um, purely because the Aces have to do something to slow her down. We'll double team her more or change who defends her. I don't know what it's going to be, but they need to do something differently. If we look at her rebounds, 9.5 is a line. It's quite high. Um, she only had five rebounds in that last game against the Aces this season. She's covered this line in two out of her last four. And in her last 10 games, it's a little bit patchy there. So Brianna Stewart can be a leading rebounder on the night, any given night. But she could also do sweet as fuck all. So yeah, I don't have any looks here on why and how she gets more rebounds. But I also don't have the confidence to bet the under. Purely because 9.5, they set it there for a reason, and she's real capable of hitting it. She's done it twice against the Liberty, 12, I mean, against the Aces, 12 and 11 rebounds in two games, seven and five in the two others. There's no real trends from what I can see as to how and why this happens. Um, so I'm going to have to pass on it for Brianna Stewart and her boards. The one look that I probably would take for Brianna Stewart, it's actually on her assists, and I'd be looking at the over here. It's a plus money play. She had four assists in that last game. It was the first time against the Aces all season where she's gone over her assist prop. And what typically happens with players like Brianna Stewart, they don't just go out there and start playmaking for others. This is a reaction to how the defense plays her. So in that second half, Aces look to switch shit up, and Brianna Stewart managed to get more dimes off. So I'm thinking if the Aces are going to make some adjustments with how they defend Brianna Stewart and they try to force the ball out of her hand a little bit more, Brianna Stewart could get a lot more assists, right? So four assists at plus money. Um, I think it's a risky play. It's a ballsy look, and it's based in my opinion, but I do think she goes over. Am I betting on it? No, but that's what my gut tells me. So Brianna Stewart over her assists. The rebounds I've got no fucking idea about. Points, she should go over, but... It depends how well the Aces are uh, go at making their adjustments. Next, we've got John Cole Jones. Now, John Cole Jones, I liked her rebounds prop in the last game. I didn't bet it, of course, and she cashed it. Now I'm hesitant to bet it in this one, and we'll get to that when we talk about her rebounds. But her points prop, 14.5. She's cashing six of 13 games against the Aces, two out of four games this season, 34, 10, 15, and then 13 most recently. In the lead up to the playoffs, she was pretty poor. She's covered this line in one out of the four games that she's played in the playoffs already. So 14.5 seems a little bit high for me. But if this was the first game they were playing, I'd probably bet the under. 
But my concern here is if Brianna Stewart is forced to pass the ball more, you really only have Sabrina and John Curl Jones, I would say. They're probably the key players you would expect to score a lot more points if the Aces change how they're playing defense. So that's why I'm not brave enough to bet it. Also, they've set the line at 14.5 despite her only hitting that once in her last seven games. So that concerns me as well. So I'm going to have to pass on, Brian, on John Curl Jones and her points prop for now. Um, but I can see why I would lean to the under, but I can also see how she goes over. So I can see both sides to it, which is contradicting. So I'm choosing not to bet on either of them, but I'll leave it up to you. Maybe you've got a look. If you do have a look on John Curl Jones and her points, let me know in the comments section. Tell me why. Tell me what the bet is. There's a lot There's a lot, a lot of people out there watching these videos who are smarter than I am. I'll tell you that. Her rebound prop, 9.5. This was at 8.5 in the last game, I believe, or even 7.5. I forgot what it was. I think it was 8.5. Uh, but she had 12 rebounds in that last game. She's rebounded well against Aces throughout her career. She averages 10.5 rebounds. She's covered this line in two or four games against the Aces this season. In the lead-up to the playoffs, pretty quiet on the rebounding front. But then the playoffs hit, and she's covered this line in three out of four games. If this was at 8.5, I'd probably bet it. At 9.5 minus 128. I'm not necessarily excited by that at all. Um, so you're probably best, if you're looking at John Curl Jones, maybe look at Double Double perhaps. I think that could be provide better value and a similar probability. Um, but John Curl Jones, I'm not overly excited about the rebound prop. She could well and truly finish on eight. She's done it four different times in the last two years against the Aces. So um, yeah, I'd probably yeah, I'd lean to the over, but with not too much confidence. Uh, her is props at 2.5. She did have two assists in that very last game against them. Has had some big assist games against the Aces. And what's funny is, this is an example how teams make changes to the way that they play. So this first game this season against the Aces, she scored like 34 points against them. The following game, the Aces made a lot of adjustments to how they defend John Curl Jones. She definitely scored a lot less. I think she scored 10 points in the following game, but she dimed up seven assists in that following game. So that's an example as to why I think Brianna Stewart can get more assists based on how the defense plays them. But let's talk about John Curl Jones. Do I like her assists in this one? Not really, no. I'd probably bet the under if I had to. It's a plus money play right now to take the under for John Curl Jones. But at the same time, I'm not overly confident in betting that, if I'm being honest with you. So John Curl Jones, I've got no players on her. Um, we then have Leonie Feebish. Now, I've been looking for Leonie Feebish for the past couple of months, really, because she can have some big games. Very important player to have on this team. Now, her line's at 9.5. Some places you can find it at 8.5, but it looks like it's um, at 9.5 right now. Now, she only scored six points in the last game, and the 9.5 is high enough for me not to want to bet it. She does score a lot of her points from shooting three-pointers. So at 8.5, you're really looking at three three-pointers made. Her three-pointers made line, uh, two and a half is a plus money play. So you could look at that, but I don't think this is necessarily the matchup for her. I think if the Liberty can get through, Leonie Feebish, a play on her, could be on the cards. But against this Aces team, uh, the Aces, they actually defend spot-up shooters quite well. Uh, they don't necessarily leave people open and catch and shoot, which is Liebisch's special. Uh, she torched the Atlanta Dream in one game. So I'm pass on the Ubish, but I am excited that her props are available. Now, lastly, we've got Sabrina Ionescu. <laughs> so the Air Horns have gone off, which means I do have a play on Sabrina Ionescu, and I'll take you through that right now. Uh, what I'm looking at here for Sabrina is her over in her points plus assists. So we're looking at over 23.5 points plus assists. She had a super efficient game one. Uh, she only took 15 shots in that game one, which is pretty wild because she played a lot of minutes. But 15 shots, she made nine of them. She shot 60% from the field, and she was three from six from downtown. So she wasn't just bombing it up the way she has done many times throughout this season. She did pour in five assists in that game as well. Um, what I did notice, funnily enough, in that game uh, the Aces were very happy to play Sabrina one on one. They didn't have too much double teams. They didn't blitz too many screens. Happy to let her and Jackie Young go at it one on one. I also don't see the Aces making too many adjustments on how they defend Sabrina. It's not like she killed them, right? So uh, Brianna Stewart scored 34 points. You can't change the way you defend Brianna Stewart and change the way you defend Sabrina Ionescu because of one game. You're pretty much changing your whole defense. Which is clear. What is clear is you have to change the way you're defending Brianna. And I think Sabrina, they don't make too many adjustments with. So the way that I see this happening is Jackie Young still going to defend her one-on-one. -on -one. 
I think there's going to be minimal help when Sabrina attacks the basket as well. If they do happen to collapse on her, Sabrina more than a, more than capable for creating shots for others so she can get assists that way. Um, but I really do see some upside in her scoring in this game. And the reason why I say that is the shot volume. Like I said, 15 shots, um, and she played a whole lot of minutes as well. She played minutes in that last game, which is exactly what you want to see in the playoffs. Your star players seeing a lot of minutes. Um, I don't see a blowout in this game. I think that's the only thing that will impact her minutes, a blowout or foul trouble. She doesn't necessarily get into foul trouble, and I don't see the Liberty blowing the aces out and vice versa. So I do think there's an upside to her playing such high minutes, and I've also run the numbers for this. So check this out. In the games this season, you can do all this in Outlier. When you look at the games where Sabrina's played at least 35 minutes, what do we see? In the games where Sabrina's played at least 35 minutes this season, this graph is green as fuck, by the way, and that's arousing. But she's covered this line of 23.5 points plus assists in 11 out of 12 games when she plays more than 35 minutes. Now, she might play 38 minutes again, which is even better, but that gives us a smaller sample size. At 35 minutes, you can see how great this is. 30 point. 08 points plus assist for Sabrina when she logs these heavy minutes. Um, I also broke it down to looking at how many shots is she bridging here? Almost 19 shots per game when she plays this volume of minutes. The 15 shots that she took in that last game against the Aces, that's her third lowest total when she plays more than 35 minutes. So I think she's leaving a little bit of food on the table there, and I'm here to eat it all up. So I've also ran the numbers when she takes at least 18 shots in a game. She's covered this line in 10 out of her last 13 games this season. So to pretty much sum up the whole angle here on Sabrina is that I think she's going to play a whole lot of minutes. She's going to get a whole lot of opportunities. The Aces are going to adjust how they defend Brianna Stewart, and it has to open things up for Sabrina. Either Sabrina's going to go wild, she's going to score a lot of points today, or someone like John Curl Jones will probably score 20 to 25 points. That's what I think happens. They're not letting Brianna Stewart score 30 points again. If they, if they, if she does score 30 points again, this Aces team doesn't deserve the right to see the finals this season. That's what I'm saying. But Sabrina, I do like her over in points. I like her over in assists. I think both of those are really good looks. In terms of her rebounds, lines at 4.5. I'm not overly attached to the over or the under. Had four rebounds in the last game against them. Uh, she's covered this line only once in her last six games against them, if that means anything. So I'd probably lean to the under, but that is juice to the max. Well, not to the max, minus 119. I just think taking the over in her points and her assists is the better play. If you don't have the option for points plus assists, the pivot there is obviously in her points. Take the over for Sabrina to score, because I think 17.5 is quite low, given the amount of volume she's about to see. Up with the breaks real quick to give a shout out to my partners, Chalkboard Rebet. Dabble and Boom Fantasy. These guys all pay me a little bit of cash if you sign up and make your first deposit. Doesn't matter if you win or you lose. None of that goes back to me. So I encourage you guys to check these guys out. They all have sign-up offers. They all have something that makes them special. And I think they're all quality apps. There's some social features on Rebet, Chalkboard, Dabble as well. They got a lot of cool social features. Dabble and Boom Fantasy have the best payouts in the industry, much better than price picks. Boom Fantasy has that spin the wheel option, which gives you boost to your payout, which is awesome. Uh, Dabble's got a copy feature. You find the people who are winning the most on Dabble, and you simply just copy their bets with one click. Chalkboard has the ability to alter lines, so you can make um, alternate lines to <laughs> make it a bit safer, you could say. And then Rebet has some awesome uh, social features, but you can also um, bet totals, spreads, money line, and stuff on Rebet as well. So I encourage you guys to check them out. If you're interested, there's links in the video description below. Uh, also, if you do sign up with any of these guys and you make your first deposit, reach out to me on Discord, Instagram, or Twitter, and I'll give you a month of my VIP for free. So be sure to check these guys out. Now let's get back to the second game. All right, we're looking at the second game for the Connecticut Sun versus the Minnesota Lynx. The Connecticut Sun did steal that first game in Minnesota. I picked Connecticut to win this series. Uh, it is going to be close, but I did back them in that line, so I had a pretty good read. And I do read Connecticut Sun games quite well, believe it or not. I think my hit rate's amazing on them. And we did cash out. We hit some awesome parlays in that last game. But let's talk about it. Uh, player props. Let's go through the Connecticut Sun first. They're on the road. Um, and we'll start with Alyssa Thomas. Alyssa Thomas, a beast. Bet on her in the last game. We cashed out. We took her over in points plus assists. The lines have started to move, though, which has started to make me feel a little bit hesitant to take that bet. 
But breaking down her points prop first, 14.5. You can see up against Minnesota, she's been a beast. 10 out of her last 11 games, she's hit the over. It is a plus money play. In her last 10 games, she's only hit this three times. On the season, she's only hit this nine out of 43 games. But you have to keep in mind that this is playoff Alyssa Thomas, who is a different beast. More minutes, more aggressiveness, more likely to score. But at 14.5, I don't know if I have the balls to take it. So up in that last game, 17 points against Minnesota, played 38 and a half minutes in that game. She was eight from 12. She saw 67% from the field, um, and she really came up clutch. I think she scored four points in that last minute, I believe, last minute and a half. So if you were to take this play in the last game, you would have been sweating to the last minute. And when I make these picks, I don't necessarily want to make bet on plays where I do have to sweat that last minute. So for Alyssa Thomas, I'd lean to the over at these odds. I think they're great, but I'm just not down to bet on it. I feel like it's moved too much for me to take. And a part of me feels a little bit lucky that we got the last one. Now, she does have excellent form against the Lynx. We cannot take that away. But I also think the Lynx are going to come into this game hungry as fuck after dropping that first game. They're going to make their own type of adjustments. Um, what do they do with Alyssa Thomas? I do not know. At the moment, they're just leaving her wide open all the time. And she's starting to punish them for it. Um, they might make some sort of adjustments. So in terms of the points, I'd lean to the but not with too much confidence. Her assist line has come down. Her assist line was at 9.5 in the last game. It's now down to 8.5, but it's at minus 132. She's covered this in eight out of her last 11 games against Minnesota. She's covered that this in all the three playoff games she's played already. Seven out of her last 10. I've got to tell you, I do like the over here for Alyssa Thomas, especially if the Lynx do something to try to slow down her ability to score. I do like the over. What I don't like is the odds. Minus 132 is not something I want to fuck around with. I'll pass on that. But also, there's a there's a realm here where Minnesota Lynx might choose to take away that three-point shot from Marina Mabry. And if they take away that three-point shot, you're probably losing three to four assists here for Alyssa Thomas, right? But at the same time, she made a lot of passes to Dewana Bonner, who was four for 17 in that game. So there's still ample opportunity for her to get more assists. So if anything, I'd lean to the over here for Alyssa Thomas for sure. I just don't like these odds, so I'm not going to bet it. Um, but you could do something saucy and take Alyssa Thomas over her assists and then come to score more than 65 points. That might remove a lot of the juice within this bet. Uh, so that could be an angle for you, but yeah, not one that I'm willing to take. Her rebound line's at 9.5. She did have two bounds in that last game. I'd honestly lean to the under on this one for sure. Uh, up against Minnesota, hasn't rebounded extremely well. Only covered this in four out of her line games, averaging 9.4 rebounds, exaggerated by some 20 rebound games. But I'd definitely be leaning to the under here. I think Minnesota level up the series here, which means they either shoot better or defend better. Regardless, we should see less rebounds for Alyssa Thomas. The risk in that play, though, is that Brianna Jones, not going to play many minutes in this series. Alana Smith and her ability to spread the floor, it's not good for Brianna Jones. Alana Smith can run. Brianna Jones, not necessarily her thing, which means Connecticut are playing a little bit smaller. So there's more rebounds for Thomas, more rebounds for Bonner, more rebounds for Carrington. So... That's my only hesitation. So what I'm saying is I've got no bets here on Alyssa Thomas in this game. I do lean to her over in points. I lean to her over in assists, and I lean to her under in rebounds. None of those I think I'm willing to bet right now. If I had to bet one, though, it would probably be the over in her assists, and I'd probably add an extra leg to it in a parlay to remove a lot of that juice so you can get a little bit more cash back. But, yeah, Alyssa Thomas, that's my girl. Playoff Alyssa Thomas is a beast, though. Now we have Brianna Jones. Her point line's at 8.5, rebound line's at 4.5. This has come down a lot from what they were in the last game. And the sole reason for that is her minutes absolutely tanked in that last game. 18 minutes played in that last game. Ineffective while she was on there. The pace of the game was just too much. In this playoffs, she hasn't played very well at all. Unfortunately, she ran into a fever team that was playing fast as hell. This Minnesota team... They actually play quite slow, very similar to the Connecticut Sun. But if the Minnesota team are going to win, they have to play a bit quicker. They can't play at the same pace. It's They're not going to beat the Connecticut Sun at their own game. That forces them to play a lot quicker. Now, when they play a lot quicker, Brianna Jones, she unfortunately can't play in these games. So the under makes the most sense for her. The problem is these odds aren't great. 8.5, was it 10.5? Hell yeah, we can dance. Her rebound line. That's at 4.5 now. At 5.5, it'd be all over. If anything, I'd probably still lean the under for a 4.5. Not going to lie to you there. But um, yeah, it's just low minutes. I think one thing you could do using outlier, points plus rebounds, her line's at 13.5. 
This season, she smashed that in 33 out of 43 games, 77% rate. But what about the games where she plays less than 20 minutes? She's only hit it in two out of her last six games, isn't it? right? If she plays less than 20. So, and the games where she went over, Indiana, high pace, uh, not great defensively, and the Mercury, terrible defensively, probably the worst. And she's up against mid in this one. So believe it or not, I'd probably, yeah, I'd take the under for Brianna Jones, under her points and rebounds. Fuck it. Am I something that I add right now, send it to my VIP and say, guys, we've got another play. But I do like this, the under for Brianna Jones. But the whole thing is based on the fact that she's not going to play more than 20 minutes. And we've only got one sample size of that happening against Minnesota this season. Uh, I'm not sure. This might be something they don't go into the game predetermined. She's only play 18 minutes. We play Brianna Jones. We see whether she plays well or not. We play. We see how she goes. She might play 25 to 30 minutes, depending on how she plays. So that's my reservation on this, and I'm probably not going to bet it now that I think about it. But it'd be smart with these things. So I'll pass on Brianna Jones, but definitely leaning to the under on her points and leaning on to the under on her rebounds as well. Next up, we have Dewana Bunner. 13.5 points is her line. Uh, she's gone under in her last two games against Minnesota this season. First two games against Minnesota, she scored 20 plus points. She's covered in seven out of her last 11 games against them. In her last 10 games, she's four out of the last 10, 11.8 as an average. Let's break down that last game. She played 32 minutes, only scored 10 points, but check this out four from 17. Duana Bonner was just chucking that shit up and wasn't hitting nothing. She was playing awful. She was playing good, just shooting very bad. Two from eight from downtown. That's a whole lot of three-pointers. I don't know if she's attempted more three-pointers than that in a game this season. Um, if we look at how she's gone against Minnesota in the past, yeah, not missing this many three-pointers this season, that's for sure. Uh, last year, playoffs, different story. Takes a lot more a lot more shots. So my question is, is this a playoff thing for Dawn and Bonner? Did she wait for the playoffs to start putting up some shots? Potentially, but super aggressive. As I think back to how this game was going, a lot of these shots were later in the shot clock. Um, Alyssa Thomas has the ball. She ain't going to shoot it, so she'll just throw it to Anna Bonner, and then she's just forced to bomb it, right? Now, I like the over here in terms of her volume. The question is, is she going to shoot this poorly again? 24% from the field. She's shot less than 30% in her last two games. Up against Minnesota this season, 50%, 63 40 and then 24%. So that 24% in the last game, definitely a lot lower than she has been shooting against them. I do like the over now that I think about it. If you're in the Minnesota Lynx, do you even make adjustments on how you're defending Bonner or do you just keep doing what you have been doing? Because you could say that it worked. She was four from 17. Now, if you're doing a Bonner, you probably make the adjustment and be more prepared knowing how the defense is going to play you and you probably shoot a little bit better for it. So I'd probably lean to the over in her points, but I think a good look would probably be her points plus her rebounds because she rebounded like a demon in that last game. 11 rebounds in that last one. Uh, up against Minnesota, she's only covered this in five out of her last 11. And in her last 10, three out of the last 10. But she has gone over in her last two games. So I think the rebound's a nice look here purely because of this. The Minnesota team, they don't crash the offensive glass. They ensure they stop transition points. So they're all running back. Easy defensive rebounds for someone like Bonner. From her 11 rebounds, 10 of those were defensive rebounds. She doesn't necessarily crash the offensive glass herself. So there's a lot of defensive rebounds going on there uh, for Duana Bonner. So I do like that. So the good thing is here with Bonner, you've got good rebound opportunity, but you also have good opportunities for points. So if you take over 19.5 points plus rebounds, you're looking pretty good there. She's hit this in seven out of her last 11 against Minnesota. She hit this in three out of the last four games against them. Uh, the only concern is obviously that shot percentage, I would say, but she's going to get a ton of minutes. She's actually really important to their defense uh, for Connecticut anyway. She does have a lot of length. Um, so I do like this over. I don't want a bonner over a points and rebounds. I want to shortcut this. So let me add that to my pick. Something for me to go back on, and it's something that I might bet on. I'm letting you know now. Uh, I don't think that's such a bad angle there for Dewana Bonner. Next up, we have Dijonay Carrington. Now, this is one of those bets that I put down in this game because I absolutely love it. So for me, um, I'm actually taking the over in her points plus rebounds because I do like her point her rebounds prop. Uh, let me explain why for Dijonay Carrington. Firstly, she's over in three straight games against Minnesota, 23, 19, and 22. Uh, first matchup in the playoffs, 13 points, nine rebounds. I do love her rebounds prop. I love it, but it's at minus 130, so the odds aren't great. 
for Dijanae Carrington. Um, so I've, I've gone points plus rebounds because she should continue to score anyway. But what I found really interesting in that first game was the defensive schemes that the Connecticut Sun ran. So Connecticut, they know that Minnesota is very focused on getting Nafisa Collier switched off Alyssa Thomas. They're trying to get her switched off Alyssa Thomas in every single set. And the way that they do that is they hunt a lot of pick and rolls. There's a lot of screen actions between uh, Nafisa Collier and Courtney Williams. And the whole goal there is for Alyssa Thomas to switch on to Courtney Williams, right? So what Connecticut have done to try to combat that is they're having Dewana Bonner defend Courtney Williams instead of instead of Dijanae Carrington. Because Carrington versus Nafisa Collier down low on the block, it's a mismatch every day. Whereas at least Bonner doesn't have the strength to handle Collier, but she does have some size. She does have some length to do, do a better job. So given that's happened, it means Carrington, she's spending a lot of time on the weak side, a lot of time defending Kayla McBride. She's getting a lot of uncontested rebounds that are coming her way, um, and she's going to get her opportunities as well. She played almost 40 minutes. In that, no, she played 40 minutes in that last game. What am I talking about? Almost played 40 minutes in that last game. She's going to score in transition anyway. She'll get her points. Um, and in the half court, excellent cutter off the ball working with Alyssa Thomas. So I think definitely get her points, but I love the rebounds to the max. But given the odds, I've taken her points plus her rebounds, minus one or two. It's close to plus money. Let's go. I've also run the numbers here for DJ Carrington. Uh, she's covered this points and rebounds line in every single game where she's played more than 33 minutes. Let me show you this. So this season, 11 games where she's played 33 minutes or more, averaging 21 points and rebounds, covering this line in every single one of them. That last game, she played 40 minutes. That's the most she's played in any game this season. Given that it's the playoffs, she probably gets close to playing that many minutes again. Now, I do know that Taisha Harris, she might be back in this game, but I would expect her to take some minutes of Mabry I don't think they can run Tasha Harris and Mabry at the same time, given their limits defensively. So I still think Carrington should still get at least 35 minutes, I'd say, in this game. And if you're playing more than 33 minutes, you can't deny the green, right? 100% hit rate from 11 games so far. So let's go Dijanae Carrington. I absolutely love that. We're going to play the air horn again. That's right. Dijanae Carrington. Let's go. All right. Next up for Connecticut, we've got Marina Mabry. Now, Mabry, absolute. I think the all well, the commentators calling her a dog. She's an absolute dog based on how she's playing at the moment. This 16.5, she's covered this in all three games in the playoffs already. 27, 17, and 20 points. She's been playing out of her mind. Head-to-head -head matchups against Minnesota, she's covered this in only two out of her last six. But she did have 20 points in that last game, and that means a lot. She saw 37 minutes. She took 19 shots. She was 6 from 11 from downtown. Now, I don't want to take the over here. I don't care how good she has been playing lately. The splits, they're just ridiculous. Fine. I question if she's going to get 19 points. I mean, 19 shot attempts in this game. Tysha Harris is returning. Minnesota, one of the best teams this season. They have to make some sort of adjustments, right? You can't let maybe hit another six three-pointers and expect to win this game. So I think they'll do something, some sort of adjustment to limit Marina maybe. Also, Tysha Harris, potential to come back. Uh, similar type-ish player? Not really. They're not that similar at all. But they are both out shooters, um, and she could take a couple of Marina Mabry minutes, is what I'm saying. So on the point side of things, she probably goes over. I'm leaning to the under. I'm not betting it, though. Uh, one thing I could be interested in betting on is this. Taking her over 3.5 is Marina Mabry. She's hit this in seven out of her last 10 games. And against Minnesota, she's only hit it in two out of her last six. But the reason why I think she can go over this is this Minnesota team, if I was them, and we need to stop Marina Mabry from shooting this ball. You really have two options. You either have to deny the ball so she can't get it in the first place, which is difficult because this Connecticut team, they run a lot of handoff action. And if there's a lot of handoffs, it's very difficult to deny that ball without getting a whole lot of fouls. So I don't think they're going to be able to deny her from getting the ball on the perimeter. But what they can do is stop her from shooting. And a very basic way of doing that is called running them off the line. What that basically means is when you close out to your defender, you close out hard to the point where they can't shoot the ball and you're almost forcing them to drive. And I think the Minnesota Lynx are going to force Marina and maybe to drive a lot more in this game. Yes, she can pop her floaters, but I think they prefer her pop those floaters than shoot these fucking threes down her throat. So she shot six from 11 threes, but she only shot, what was it? She shot a pretty poor percentage. She was six from 11 from downtown, but she was seven from 19 which means she was one from eight within, right? within that three-point line. 
So ne- looking at those numbers, there's no doubt in my mind this Minnesota team have to run her off the line. She was one from eight on two-point attempts. Give me that. But what that means is if Marina Mabry is going to be run off the line, she's going to be attacking the basket, I think that's going to open up the opportunity to get some assists. So the line at 3.5, I think it's going to open up. I said the same thing here. Against this game, which where Connecticut won 93-69 against the Fever, Mabry went crazy. She was slamming threes all over them. She scored 27 points. She made five from 12 three-pointers. I said in the following game that the assists are a good look because the Fever have to make some sort of adjustment here. You can't just let this girl smash all these points on you, right? She responded with six assists in that game because they forced her to shoot the ball less. They ran her off the line. And I think the Minnesota are going to do the same thing. They're going to run her off the line, force her to pass the ball and create to others. And I think over 3.5 assists is a good look at plus money. I, fucking, I just talked myself into it. I might take the over for that. Marina may be over 3.5 assists. I can definitely see it happening. Um, outside of that, her rebounds, lines at four. But what crazy son of a bitch bets on Mabry's rebounds? Not me. Let's not waste any time talking about that. Uh, now, next, we're going to go with Minnesota. What do we have on the Minnesota team? Oh, we got my homegirl, Alana Smith, who is Australian, by the way. Um, now, for Alana Smith, you heard the horn, baby. i got to play here. So I love this rebound prop in this game. But um, ultimately, I think I'm going to bet the points and rebounds uh, because I think there's tremendous upside in her scoring. But let's just talk about each one individually. Firstly, points-wise, Lines at 8.5. She only scored six points in that last game against Connecticut. She played 33 minutes, though, so I love that. She shot the ball nine times, and I love that. Now, she only shot two from nine from the field, which means this massive upside here. On the season, she shot 46% from the field, 37% from three, 72% from the free throw line. That last game against Connecticut, she didn't shoot the ball very well. So the only way is up, I think, when it comes to scoring the ball for Alana Smith. Now, in head-to-head matchups, she's shown that she can score against this Connecticut team. Three other games this season, 10, 14, and 9. So I do like that. The other thing I love about this play for her is the minutes, right? She got 33 minutes in that last game. If you're looking at her points prop here, what does Alana Smith when she gets at least 32 minutes? She's covered this line in seven out of eight games this season. The only game she didn't cover was that last game against Connecticut. And that was purely because she shot the ball like shit, right? She averages 10.8 shot attempts when she plays this many minutes. She shot nine times, but 22% from the field, her worst shooting output when she plays this number of t- minutes. So I think there's tremendous upside here in taking Alana Smith's over in her points. Uh, she's essential for keeping Brianna Jones off the floor. So I think she's going to see a lot of runtime. So I do like her over for points for that very reason. Very same thing for rebounds. Line is at 5.5. She had eight rebounds in that last game. Both teams very good defensively. Um, so there are a lot of rebounds available. I'll call that out. Against Connecticut, <clears throat> What do we see here? She's covered in four out of the last game against the Connecticut Sun, but three out of four games this season. So that's pretty good. Then we look at the season data. We say, what does she do? She plays at least 32 minutes. She fucking rebounds. Six out of her last eight games. Over 5.5 rebounds, averaging 7.3. So similar to some of the other plays, we know these guys are going to get a lot of minutes. They're going to get some opportunities. More points and rebounds are going to come because of it. Me being me, I think I'm just taking her points plus her rebounds. Haven't placed the bet yet. I'm waiting for her lines to open up. But by this time this video is posted, you know that I'll be all over it. If you look at points plus rebounds, say minimum 32 minutes, she's over this in eight out of her last 10 games. Give me that. Let's go. Points plus rebounds there for Alana Smith. I do love it. Uh, next up, we got Bridget Carlton. She was excellent in that last game. I think she scored 17 points. Um, she was cooking early, that's for sure. So 17 points. She's actually covered this in three games against the Connecticut Sun. She played almost 37 minutes in the last game. Six from 10, three from six from deep. I thought she was excellent. Last 10, seven out of the last 10, averaging 12.2. I lean to the over on this purely because the hit rates on it are so nice. I don't want to bet the over because she just had an awesome game against Connecticut. Uh, obviously, the whole game plan around Connecticut is how do we stop Nafisa Collier from scoring? And did a pretty good job of that. Um, the next person they'd be worried about, I would say, is Bridget Carlton. She was keeping him in the game, especially early. Uh, what adjustments do they make? I don't know what the adjustment is. Do they run her offline? I don't know. So that's my main reason why I'm not betting there over. She just had an excellent game, and I think Connecticut will do something a little bit differently. But that's my only read on that. Rebounds, 3.5 boards, 5 out of her last 10, had 2 rebounds in that last game, and has gone under this rebound line in all 4 games against the Connecticut Sun. 
So, yeah, the under for Bridget Carlton makes a lot of sense, purely on hit rate alone. Um, but the concern there is she's probably going to play a lot of minutes, right? I wonder how many rebounds she averages if she plays 36 minutes a night. Games where she plays at least 35, she averages four rebounds. All right, fair enough. Three out of eight, the unders hit. So I probably wouldn't bet the under, but that's the way I'd be leaning for Bridget Carlton. Next up, we've got Courtney Williams. A lot of people are upset with Courtney Williams, whether they took her for points, she didn't get that, or they took her for assists. I did. It was in the bat, and it didn't hit either. So <laughs> let's talk about Courtney Williams. Her points props at 10.5, um, under in her last two against Connecticut, five out of eight in her more recent career. Last 10, she's hit this line in six out of 10 games, averaging 11. She does have a difficult matchup, though, and it showed. Didn't get the points. She actually played 32 minutes in that game, which is a surprise. But she only shot three for 12 in that game, 25% from the field. I think Courtney Williams could shoot the ball better. And it's not like the Connecticut Sun are going to be game planning specifically for Courtney Williams after what they just saw, right? So similar to Alana Smith, she's someone who's taken a decent number of shots, just not hitting it. 12 shot attempts. She only shot 25% from the field. But I think for players like Courtney Williams, you can somewhat expect that to a degree. Courtney Williams does a lot of her scoring uh, from jump shooting. So not many layups for her. And when you rely on a jump shot a lot, these are the types of percentages you can see sometimes. So I'd lean to the over, but not something that I necessarily want to bet. The next look is her assist line at 5.5, minus 132 to the over. She's only hit this in five out of her last 10, but she had been diamond up against Connecticut. Check this out. And this is where I took her assist before. Uh, six out of her last eight games, she's hit the over. And they had four assists in the last game. But I think one reason why, most people from this Minnesota Lynx team didn't shoot a high percentage. Nafisa Collier wasn't great. Alana Smith wasn't great. Um, I think Bridget Carlson, probably the only one. Kayla McBride, I don't think she was great either. So a lot of opportunity for Minnesota to be better, which could lead to more assists. And I did bet Courtney Williams in that last game. Didn't cash, but chances are that it cashes in this one. So for Courtney Williams, I'd lean to the over. I do not like the odds, though. Minus 132, that does not interest me whatsoever. So I'm going to pass on Courtney Williams. But if you want a little bit on that action, I think the assists are the best look. Next, we've got Kayla McBride. And for Kayla McBride, let's talk about her points, 13.5. Now, she always gets around this. Check this out for Connecticut, especially this season. 13, 13, 14, and then 12 points in that most recent game. So I couldn't necessarily tell you to back the over, but not even the under, because either way, I think it's going to be sweaty. That last game, she played 38 minutes, 5 from 11 from the field, but only 1 from 5 from deep. So there's definitely room for improvement in terms of her three-point shooting. Her three-point line's at 2.5, though, which is pretty wild. At 1.5, I would have had a play at it. 2.5, I am not interested. Kayla McBride, what about her assists? Three assists in that last game. Only four out of her last 10. It's plus money to the over, so the sportsbook thinks she's going to go under, and I'm going to have to agree with them. I'd lean to the under for her assists. And her rebounds at 3.5. She's only hit this in one out of her last 10 games. In head-to-head -head matchups, she's rebounded well against Connecticut before, but she only had two rebounds in that very last game. So, yeah, nothing on Kayla McBride for me. Last player we're going to look through is for Nafisa Collier. Let's see what kind of response we get. So her line in that last game was 23.5. It's now at 21.5. She scored 19 points throughout the regular season, had a bit of success against them. All right. Uh, she covered in two out of the three games in the regular season, 31 and 25. This game where she scored nine, she only played 25 minutes and she only took nine shots. Let's break down that last game. She got 37 minutes of action. She shot the ball 16 times, but she only shot 44% from the field, which is not good. So there's definitely some room for improvement here for Nafisa Collier, like there is for most of the Minnesota Lynx. So I think she can definitely score better. And I do lean to the over here on that 21.5. I was crazy enough to take the over at 23.5. They have a good idea on how she can get better shots. She just didn't make them, unfortunately. But 16 shot attempts is beautiful. Um, so I lean to the over for her points. Uh, if we look at her assists, minus 180. Ain't nobody fucking around with that. She hit the over for that for sure, but the odds are ass. Her rebound line's at 8.5. She had nine rebounds in that last game. The rebounds for Nafisa are not something I want to play with. I, I've got a terrible hit rate betting on her rebounds. She's very up and down. I couldn't tell you what the hell happens. But I can tell you, I do like Alana Smith's rebound prop a lot more than Nafisa Collier's, right? They're going to play a similar number of minutes. Alana's the bigger girl. <laughs> it makes sense. Let her cook. Get those rebounds. Her line's at 5.5. Nafisa's at 
they probably both finish on eight rebounds in this game. So Benefisa and Collier don't want to bet on her rebounds, don't want to bet on her assists, but I do think the over on her points is a good look. Um, so I'll leave it up to you guys to see whether it's something that you want to do. If that wasn't one of the best previews for player props you have ever seen, I don't know what else I can do to make you happy. Very thorough, went through all the key players, their matchups, told you what I like, also told you what I'm betting on, like it's all happening here. I'm sure you would have liked the video by now, but if you haven't, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, you've got to subscribe. We're so close to getting 10,000. And also, if you're looking for new apps to bet on, or if you want more sign-up bonuses, offers, all that type of good shit, check out the, my partners, Rebet, Double Fantasy, Boom Fantasy, and Chalkboard. All links for those are in the video description. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!